Dang rude. it. Dang it. That was rude. <laughs> the music wasn't supposed to stop. <laughs> that was rude for our, for our audio folks. Andrew and I may and have I been doing some cheer were dancing. Having, we were having a thing. We were having a thing. And I brought the cameras up as they were... Um, rude. <laughs> microphone singing into their combs. Into their fans. Now I know now I know why you wanted to plan the schedule this month. <laughs> so anyway, hi everyone and welcome to that Fallout show episode 36 Baby you're my better half life. Thank you vendor for the title. It was brilliant. It was better than Shaleen's because Shaleen's salty. <laughs> I am Rick McVick and with us tonight as always is the great, lovely, wonderful and salty Miss Shaleen. <laughs> Hello, I thought you were gonna introduce Bender, so I took I took a sip of tea. <laughs> Hi everyone. It's like the waiter. How's enjoy your How's your food? It's great, wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and also with us tonight is the illustrious, shiny. I don't know. I can't come up with like robot verbs, acronym, adjectives, things to describe a robot. But welcome, Vendor. Welcome, sir or madam. <laughs> Thank you guys in the chat uh, here live on twitch.tv slash we just love games. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, this Friday evening, and how you can help grow the show. Yes, you can help us grow by sharing us on your social media, sending us emails, like subscribing and retweeting our thingies, and telling your friends about us, hosting us on Twitch. Gshettery, ick, shettery. Well, maybe don't retweet our thingies. That <laughs> Sorry, I, I had to. Is that water in your glass? No, it's soju. Have you ever had soju? <laughs> no. It's basically like Korean rum. So it's this. Oh. It's this one's blueberry. Blueberry. It's very, uh, it's very nice. It's almost like sake, but not sake. Sake it to me, Leo. All right, tonight we have such gems like the jokes that you have just heard, and uh, some news, some gameplay, some challenges. Crap, I forgot about the challenges. So we'll just strike that one off the list. <laughs> no challenge. None. Th this, Guys, this, this show you know is a challenge. What else, you know what else we didn't do? What? No, we did that. We did that, Shaleen. It's fine. Don't mention it. <laughs> Are you quite sure? <laughs> I don't know what's, I don't know what's going on sure here now. Done that? Okay, well, anyway, we have the Valentine's special segment. Uh, and some emails. But before we get into things that may or may not happen, Vendor, you want to take away with some five-star reviews? Of course I do. We have a single five-star review shout-out from, uh, well, I'm going to save the name till the end because it's glorious. Um, they say, hey, guys, I listen to you guys while I do my snow removal roots. Thanks for a great show and keep up the good work. Fopocalypse. Uh, if you would like to leave us a five-star review shout-out, all you have to do is go to iTunes or Apple Podcasts, search We Just Love Games, That Fallout Show, or GameStack Podcast, and uh, leave us a five-star uh, rating and a small message, and we'll shout you out on the, the next episode of That Fallout Show. Uh, we also have some new people in the Discord. Um, actually, we don't have any new people in the Discord, We, but we do have some new events in the Discord. We got boosted again. You guys remember when I boosted the server when I won yes, that? Yes, there was you confetti. stole it. Yeah, I won a month of free Nitro on Discord, which I still don't quite understand what it does. But anyways, we got boosted by somebody. Um, Paintball Girl boosted the server with uh, their her her uh, uh, Discord Nitro. And I just want to put a message out there. If you have Nitro, go ahead and give WJLG a, a nice boost. You could certainly so. use it. We don't know what it does, but it makes us happy. There's so, confetti. Yeah, and if you boost it, of course, we'll shout you out on the show. 
Um, and if you want to get involved in the Discord, which is a growing community, guys, guess how many people we have now in the Discord? 365. 42. Oh, well, no. Uh, you're close, Rick. I think Ooh. we're at 379. Nice. Wow. Yeah. So uh, so we've got a lot of people in there. People keep coming in. If you would like to join the Discord, which is our chat after dark, uh, you can scroll down right below Rick on the left-hand side of our Twitch page, and there is a Discord symbol that will bring you right into our server. That's it from me. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, without further ado... That bumper took a little bit of lag there to get up and running. The tapes had to spin up. But Shaleen, what happened in the world of Fallout? Go. I don't know. I can't. I can't. There's no week anymore. It's just, it was so smooth before. I got to figure out what to say. It's still, you can still say this week because we're talking about this week's news. It's fine. It's fine. It uh, well, not much happened this week, but there are some things happening in the future. Specifically, Wastelanders is coming mm. April 7th. We have a release date. Did you guys have to watch the trailer? I, I have not actually watched it yet. The trailer is uh, very hyping. It is. They yeah. know how to make a trailer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm terrified of the new cryptid already. Like, like terrified. Uh, and I think it's going to be fun to use a bow. I think that'll be, that'll be fun. I did see pictures of the new cryptid, and that's pretty rad looking. I've got to say, scary. It's pretty awesome scary. looking. Yeah, I'll be hiding from that. Um, but yeah, Wastelanders comes April seventh, so that is when we can expect it. And also on April the seventh, Fallout seventy six will be coming to Steam. Oh. So if you hate the Bethesda launcher, like I do. Uh, now you'll have an option. But however, there are some unfortunate things. Um, your progress will carry over to the Steam version, and any of your, uh, what's it called, Atom Shop purchases, those will carry over. Uh, but you will have to purchase a Steam version of the game. So if you own it on Bethesda Launcher, you don't automatically own a Steam copy as well. Um, but they will, they will transfer your save files and, uh, and any of your Atom Shop purchases, so that's a good thing. Uh, there is a Purveyor mystery pick coming up this week, starting on Thursday. So you can pay a visit to Murmurmurg and get a uh, a three star <laughs> legendary. Um, I I maxed out my script last week, so what? Yes, I am prepared. <laughs> <laughs> I am prepared. I maxed out my script. Uh, I, I feel like... My bounty uh, is ready. Yes. What does that even mean, max out your script? You can have a maximum of a thousand script. Do you know what script are? Did you quit before then? I think no. you quit before Murmur. I don't know what okay. script is. Script. Okay, so do script you know about Murmurmurg? What? Do you know about Murmurmurg? Are you having a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Murmurmurg is a lady mole miner. <laughs> and she is a vendor, and you can find her in, in one location and visit her and buy legendary weapons and armor. Huh. And the currency that you use for this is called Scrip. And okay. uh, you obtain Scrip by selling off legendary weapons and armor in a vending machine. So, Interesting. Um, mm -hmm. You have a, a limit of a thousand Scrip, and I hit my Scrip limit. Um, so I, I am prepared to buy all of Murmur Murmur's random legendaries, and maybe I'll get something good. I think you keep adding a murmur every time you do yeah. it. Murmur 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 <laughs> On the Fallout feed, they call her Murgle Burgle, which is pretty good as well. Mur Murgle Hurgle? Murgle Burgle. <laughs> Murgle Burgle. Voiced by Betty White. Murmur Murmur sounds like yes. some sort of like Jim Henson creation. It kind of is. It's... <laughs> Basically, it really kind of is. She's a little mole miner vendor, and she wears a little babushka, like a little, a little, she a little does. floral handkerchief tied around her head. Come here, baby. I take care of you. Come here. And like, and she oh. like, like cooks you fish and feeds you and clothes you. Oh my wow. gosh. And she hugs you, and breaks she's you, soft and warm some, and comforting. Bakes you some bread. <laughs> Vodka. <laughs> um. 
Oh gosh, Murmur Murmur is is great though, and uh, I'm looking forward to spending all my script on legendary legendary weapons. I'm hoping for a nice uh, a nice legendary bear fist um, of some kind. <laughs> There's is it going to be the fist of Chuck Norris? It's the legendary bear fist. <laughs> it's my my bear skull fist, Rick. My bear skull fist. Uh -huh. It's glorious, the bear skull fist. I adore it. There's some new Twitch Prime loot available now. Um, so if you have Twitch Prime, you can claim this fabulous loot. It's a bit better than the last round of Twitch Prime loot, in my opinion. And this includes Nuka Cherry armor paints for leather, metal, and combat armor. And uh, a branding iron fire axe skin. Uh, so it, it's like a skin for the fire axe that makes it look like a raider branding iron. Hmm. And there is a new photo mode pose that is basically the yoga tree pose. Um, to me, it's a little strange because the knees don't seem to bend the way they should. Uh, and it looks particularly outlandish in power armor. Sounds like sounds like something a monarch would say. <laughs> what? Bend the knee. The knees just don't seem to bend the way they bend should. the knee, John Snow. <laughs> bend the knee. I guess I've missed something. Bend the knee is in to pledge your allegiance, you know. To yeah, the um... to the king. <laughs> I was nope. joking about the knees not bending right in the in the yeah in the. You watched Game of Thrones, Rick? I know, but it like I don't remember every single little moment of it. Okay, that's fine. You do know what uh, a monarch is, do you? A butterfly? Oh, boy. Okay. Oh. I'm just gonna... We'll, oh. just, we'll, we'll draw that out for you in crayon later on. <laughs> no, I know. I, I know, yes. I remember, yeah. Monarch, the king, bend the knee. Got it. This is the last time you're allowed to have a nap before the show, my dear. <laughs> Would you rather me have moonshine before the show? <laughs> he was murmuring. No. <laughs> murmuring on the outbreath. Vincent. Vincent. I have a drink, thank you very much. Ghost Pines Red Wine Blend. It's very good. Oh, dear. We are not endorsed by whatever wine that was that you just said. Ghost Tree. But not if, Ghost you, Pine. if you'd like to endorse us, yep. um, totally write us. We are. We are <laughs> info we just love case.com info we just love case.com <laughs> uh, so all of those things that i just mentioned were part of the most recent inside the vault update from bethesda and something that was not a part of this update but that i wanted to mention anyway is that they have teased a faction reputation system for wastelanders uh specifically they've mentioned two factions raiders and settlers and uh, depending on the choices that you make in the quests and the dialogue options that you choose in dialogue trees, uh, you will build reputation and lose reputation in a similar way to New Vegas is okay. what it looks like. So, for example, if you help Good Springs, then the Powder Gangers will not like you. So I think that looks pretty compelling. Um, that uh, may introduce an additional level of replayability. So we'll see how that works. Hmm. Definitely, definitely interested to see. That's it for the news. Um, what, what are, what are there? What are, what's, what's in the ballistic bargains? This, hey, this I wanted to talk a little bit about Wastelanders before oh, you just pitch ahead, it over Rick. to the Please robot. Please do. Please do. I would love for you to talk about Wastelanders. I'm. I was just gonna say that. Um, you know, someone in the chat mentioned uh, April seventh is gonna be the day of crashes, and I'm, I'm genuinely curious of your opinion Shaleen as you've been playing the game more than I have I haven't even installed it yet again um, so you've had the updates and you've seen it. do you feel like from the past couple of updates and, and rollouts and things do you think this is going to be like Crash City or do you think it's going to be you know stable you know what I have I have no better insight than you do on this I feel like they need for it to launch smoothly. They need for it to. And they do have the the private test server out. You know, people are people are playing it right now. And hopefully they are providing feedback that will help get this into a stable place. But honestly, I can't predict. I can't predict whether or not this is going to launch. I'm sure there will be some bugs, 
but I don't know if it's going to be disastrous or not. I, I really feel like even a minor, minor problems are going to be seen as major problems because of the Just way biases. that this, this game has gone. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, um, I mean, I'm offering up my unsolicited opinion here. <laughs> Well, that's why people listen to the show. <laughs> I um, you don't need to I think this. that I think that uh, the the load uh, upon release is going to be really big. Yeah. Um, I think it might even be bigger than the, than the initial At release launch. of the game I think itself. You're right. Um, and I think I think not only that, I think a lot of people are going to be downloading the game from scratch again, mm -hmm. um, mm. which is going to add to the burden even more so i think you and i are um, going to be two of those people so i think there's going to be some major server issues those uh, are really on that good front. points i do think that it will not be entirely complete uh, i think they're going to be continually adding stuff because that is the pattern that we've seen um i think that there's going to be some systems that are going to be out of whack while they try to sort things out um, I think that we can see some price differences in the Atom Shop that kind of throw things off. Maybe some rewards from things that we do might not be what we expect them to be, or they might be so OP that it's just, you know, kind of silly. Um, so I think that there's going to be some balancing issues. And then also, um, I, I, I wonder, like, we don't actually know if they've been beta testing within the public. Have they been beta testing? Yeah, they have. They, they have a test have server. Been. Okay. We so. reported on the on the private test server on this very podcast. Okay. Okay. I couldn't remember. Sorry. So I'm hoping that they take that information. Um, don't shake your head at me. <laughs> I don't even remember what I had for breakfast. <laughs> you... you Never mind. Anyways, so those yeah. are that's my thoughts. So. This is gonna bring me back into the game. I'm gonna re-download it. I'm probably even gonna play it before Wastelanders comes out. Yeah, um, I'm gonna. I'm. It's gonna bring me back. I. I think for sure. I still think this could be, depending. Uh, sorry, I just looked at the chat. And it's not Agent Cooper's like, you strike me as a waffles person, Bender. <laughs> Don't like waffles. Or I what? Was a fresh fruit in the morning kind of guy. And like fresh fruit and, like, fresh fruit and coffee. Like a hard boiled mm -hmm. egg in one of those like egg holders that almost looks like an, an eye wash thing. Not yeah, even an that. egg cup. Mm. Nope. Um, but anyway, um, what I was gonna say, I, 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 th part of me, and maybe I'm looking too, too much into this, but I feel like if they pull this <laughs> off, and they make it what? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, for those of you listening, someone just said Vendor's a fresh says, fruit. All right. Yeah. Vendor's a fresh fruit. All right. <laughs> I, I'll deal with you later. <laughs> so I, I don't think this is going to be a no man's sky moment, but I have a feeling it'll be something along those lines where they come along and totally redeem themselves. And just when I thought you couldn't get any dumber. <laughs> You go ahead and do something like this. I think that's how this is going to go. Redeem yourself. <laughs> yeah. This could be their moped moment. <laughs> this could be their moment. Um, we shall see. And I, I've got nothing but hope in my little heart um, after it has been dashed to bits. No, no. Yeah. I, Honestly, I feel like I may have less faith in, in the launch of Wastelanders than you do. Even. really yeah i i oh i think i think it's gonna be great you know i think i'm going to enjoy it i think i'm gonna put a lot of time into it but i don't think that that it's going to change minds about this game i think if you don't enjoy what the game is now i don't think i don't think you're gonna enjoy what it is after wastelanders drops there's gonna well, be a night go ahead no, I was going to say, there's going to be a guaranteed subset of people who just will not change their mind for anything. But I, I do think this is going to, if it goes right and goes good and mm -hmm. it's good content, I think it's going to shift the focus a bit more. I think part of it, too, is on the shoulders of the people playing it. Um, 
And I mean, don't get me wrong. I love you guys and I love playing Fallout 76 with you, but I never have played it by myself. And um, I'm thinking when Wastelanders is released that I'm going to spend some much devoted time that the game needs and just play it by myself. I think that's um, a lovely idea. And really experience it because I don't think that I've really given it a fair chance in not doing so. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Yeah. Now, it is a very, I, I enjoy playing it co-op, but it's a very different experience when you play it by yourself. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's how I'm going to go into it. And then, uh, and then, you know, I'll catch up with you guys along the way, so to speak. Uh um, but I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. I, I do think that it could potentially be its saving grace. Yeah. Well, um, vendor. Speaking of savings, let's go ahead and talk about some ballistic b b b b b bargains. Take it away. Well, you guys, um, there is a bunch of new stuff coming into the Atomic Shop uh, this week. This is for February fourth to eleventh. Um, for right now, you can enjoy one single free item, which is the pink suit. Um, so you can get it. It's your, magnificent, you can by get the way. Pink suit pink causes suit cancer. For your, for your hot date. Um, that is available only until February 11th. So if you want to get that for Valentine's Day, make sure you get it before February 11th. That's February 11th. Um, there are some limited time offers as well with Valentine's Day just around the corner. That means that all, it's also time to share the love. So... Um, Bethesda has come up with some some limited time offers. You can get the Share the Love Camp bundle. Shaleen, I believe that you have this. No, I didn't pick it up. Okay. Um, all I got was the pink suit and uh, what was the other thing I bought? Balloons. The I think pink, I, just uh, I got the balloons. I got the balloons and I got the pink Pip Boy. Question: so, Can you pop the balloons? No. <sighs> I bet you, if it was Red Dead, you could though. Anyways, that's beside the point. Um, there's the Share the Love Camp bundle for 1,200 atoms available. All of these things are available until February 18th, uh, which is the Share the Love Camp bundle, Valentine's Day wallpaper set, pink neon heart sign, Valentine's Day mega sloth rug, Mr. Fuzzy Valentine's Day plushie, and the Valentine's Day heart balloons, which Shaleen has. They're fabulous. You can also get, up until February 11th, the Nuka Cola vending machine secret door, the Nuka dark power armor paint, and the Nuka Cola projection lamp. Those are all available. I just want to share with you guys what is actually inclu included in the Share the Love bundle. Um, you can get, uh, in this bundle, you get the Scorch Beast Heart Specimen Jar, uh, which is a bonus item that's actually only currently available as part of the Share the Love bundle. Uh, you can also get the pink neon heart sign, the Valentine's Day Mega Sloth Rug, uh, the Mega uh, Valentine's Day heart balloons, the wallpaper set, and the Mr. Fuzzy Valentine's Valentine's Day plushie. So, um, three, six, nine. It's actually cheaper to get the bundle I than just... it is to buy those items individually. <laughs> so, I just wanted to break into song. <laughs> me too. Rick, so me bad. Too. Three, six, nine. <laughs> Damn good time. Uh, Hello. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's, we've showed our age. Run. <laughs> Need for speed. speed. Yes. Huh? We make we we just have the the same bad jokes. So It was a great joke. <laughs> Anyways, some items that you can expect to be returning for a brief visit and they will be on sale available until 12 p.m eastern standard time on february 11th is the <gasps> kill laugh love neon sign princess castle bed pink corvega pip boy paint hard case corvega backpack corvega small generator medium generator corvega small water purifier corvega industrial water purifier and yellow flowers wallpaper <sighs> all, well done all 40 percent off also, uh, headed for the vault, there are some existing items um, coming out of the Atomic Shop and into the vault this week. Uh, you can get those again till 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, February 11th. Uh, that is the Mobster Outfit, Lucille's uh, Lullaby, as well as the Eye Patch Bundle. And lastly, there are some weekly offers, uh, which includes uh, available until February 11th, the Corvega Turret Skin Set, 
the Blackbird Hunting Rifle Paint, available till February 6th, which was yesterday, so forget that one. Uh, Matte Black Handmade Rifle Paint, which is available till February 9th. And the Blackbird Super Sludge Paint, avail available until February 11th. That is everything out of the Atomic Shop this week. Back to you, Rick. All right, but we're not done with the uh, Atomic talk. No, we're going to do a segment that has uh, been wanting to come back for a while, and we've done it a few times here, but it's Fallout IRL, and we need a bumper for that. Like, like that some like, like, I thought you had, must have made a bumper for it because of the like, way you were leading up. I'm going to have to, because it feels good. It feels like you should lead into this, and then we have like some like World War II, like... I don't know. Anyway, so... I feel like we need the old news stinger, like... <laughs> we need just, something we need something, something. yeah uh, but nothing that we have right now hmm. something worldly worldly you know just all encompassing people and I don't know here we okay. are planning the show on the show take so, it away Rick so we were <laughs> trying to figure out what we were going to talk about this week uh, since it's coming up close to the uh, well it's either the most beloved holy holiday to some or it's the uh, holiday that brings about the most death and destruction to one's self-esteem. I don't know how you view February 14th. I like February to call 14th. it Discount Chocolate Eve. Discount yeah. Chocolate Eve. <laughs> so um, I did some Googling to try to figure out, like, what topics, like, what happened on Valentine's Day that may be um, correlated with nuclear stuff, atomic things, that sort of thing. What did Turns you find? Turns out, what? Oh, I'm just asking, what, what did you find? Well, it turns out, Vendor, thank you for asking, um, that in 1950, on February 14th, which is the day of love, uh, a Convair B-36 Air Force plane uh, was flying near uh, British Columbia. It was doing a fake bomb run, and it was carrying a Mark IV nuclear bomb. And so it was a fake bomb run, but a real bomb. Yes, because that's how you do things in America. Yeah, actually, this is, this is fake, in but British we're gonna... Colum Wait, which British Columbia are we talking about? Canada. Okay, so that's not America. So this... <laughs> just for the record, I'm get I'm getting there. So the Corvair B thirty six B was flying a simulated nuclear strike run on the Soviet Union. So of course they fly over Canada. And it took off from the uh, Pacific Northwest, particularly the panhandle of Alaska, because that's okay. the United States vendor. It still throws me why we have a state all the way up there. It's so weird. It's because we're slowly annexing it. Don't oh, worry. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> it frees you out. Um, it was, it was going to run to uh, Southern California and then to San Francisco and then continue its nonstop flight to Fort Worth, Texas. And so it did not go particularly well, um, but... Before we get to that, um, it did not. It was not supposed to penetrate Canadian airspace by any stretch. It was supposed to just kind of go around it over the sea. It was carrying a Mark IV atomic bomb, uh, and it contained 5,000 pounds of TNT and some uranium, but it did not include the plutonium warhead that would set off a nuclear explosion. So it would just be a really, really big boom, but there would be no nuclear explosion as a result of, of its detonation. Okay. So there's that. As the plane was flying, though, something terrible, drastically bad, befell the plane and its engines, technically. It was so cold that it froze. <laughs> really? So this, yeah, this plane had, has six engines, three per wing. Um, and three of the six engines began shooting flames, and they uh, were shut down. And since it was trying to fly Jesus. on three other engines, it just it, it didn't work. So there was ice buildup in the carburetor intakes of these engines, so they couldn't suck yeah. in enough air, and they overheated and went... <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. So they didn't have, like... Well, I mean, it was the 50s. Did they even have de de-icers? I, apparently they didn't because they went down. So... <laughs> um, the atomic bomb was jettisoned and detonated in midair, um, and this happened off the coast of British Columbia, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I they're saying Mount Mount Kolagay? Yes. Yes. Uh which if I remember my mountains, that would be somewhere near Swan Lake. 
there you go. Swan Lake, uh, British Columbia. Um, they later, the USAF later stated that the fake practice core on board the aircraft was inserted into the weapon before it was dropped. I don't really know why they did that, but uh, there you go. Um, hmm. So it, it went down, and they sent out um, – they sent out uh, a few people to search, and they did. They ended up surviving. Twelve people did. There were five fatalities, though, from the aircraft going down. Um, and then, uh, let's see here. Let's look at this. So, the search efforts um, w- apparently were hampered due to weather. Twelve of the 17 men were found alive. One of the five deceased, the weapon year, was rumored to have been recovered four years later at 50, 1954. Um, the remaining four airmen, airmen were believed to have bailed out before the uh, before it hit. I'm surprised they survived at all. I mean, crashing yeah. in the mountains, uh, first of all, good is pilot. not like not a good thing. Um, no, but it can get really cold on the top of those mountains. Um, yeah. Assuming they were somewhere near the top, maybe. Yeah, hmm. um, I, I don't know. I mean, apparently th- it took them a long time to try to find it, and they weren't actually even sure where it hit. Um, you know, in 1997, they they found two uh, – let's see here. What does it say? Um, they found it, I think f- – its exact location apparently was unknown for 40 years, <laughs> and they found it uh, in 1997. I think I'm reading correctly here. So um, they found the people, but they didn't find the plane. Yeah, well, I mean, the, they probably didn't stay with the plane, but... Well, good point, yeah. They probably headed for the base where it was warmer. Um, yeah, so I, who knows, but uh, th- in 2016, a diver reported that he had discovered something that looked like a segment of the partially disarmed Mark IV bomb uh, that the co-pilot said they had dumped before the crash. Uh, the location was near Pitt Island uh, in the inside and passage, but uh, it was mistakenly recorded as off... Uh, Haida Gwai. Um, although the <laughs> Royal Canadian Navy later confirmed that this was not the Mark IV bomb. Huh. So it was not the bomb. Apparently, uh, they've re- re- reclaimed some of the pieces from the crash. A portion of one of the gun turrets is on display at the Balky Valley Museum in Smithers, B.C. Cool. So, yeah, apparently there was a nuclear – and this, I think, was the first nuclear accident of the United States, of United States history, and it happened on Valentine's Day. Let's hope that your Valentine's Day is not a nuclear accident. <laughs> well, um, that's really interesting. Yeah. So, I didn't even so – this, So this bomb is just out there somewhere? Well, no, they detonated it, so – it, it was a conventional explosion, so technically pieces of it could be whole. But, I mean, for all intents and purposes, five thousands of TNT was exploded in the shell casing. So um, there could be, like, parts of it. But, no, the bomb is, for all intents and purposes, detonated. So he huh. just thought that they found, like, a part of it. So I don't know why that would matter nowadays because we're into plutonium now. We've upgraded. Uh and uh, we're into plutonium devices, not uh, atomic devices it's, these days. It's interesting how in the 1950s um, they were capable of jettisoning uh, a bomb and detonating it in midair remotely. Hmm. Timed fuse of some sort. <laughs> it's uh, not like they so, dropped yeah. it with like a wick and like... And then they pushed a button in the airplane or something and it went off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like all... like There like was a all... very long string to a like plunger. Act- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pull it now. Did you get it? So... Well, in the, in the, in the 40s when they were, you know, f- jumping out of planes, it was a hook attached to... A cable, and after they yeah. fell a certain distance, it yank, and then that would pop the chute. So, <laughs> I mean, it was p- quite a rudimentary thing. I don't know why they didn't decide to do like the pull string thing. Um, maybe they just wanted it all to be done at one fluid motion. I don't know, but yeah, I I don't know what kind of fuses they use. I imagine some sort of chemically timed fuse, mm-hmm. um, but I don't know. I doubt it was like a wick thing, but who knows? Huh, that's really interesting. Yeah. I had no idea that happened. 
Yeah, it's crazy when you think about some of the technology that they were able to come up with and utilize considering the limitations of technology at the time. I mean, they were doing these nuclear tests, sending people to the moon when, uh, you know, hard drives are basically real-to-real -real tape machines. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's impressive what they were able to do at that point. And, um, yeah. I'm just, I'm, just looking at, um, I'm just looking at Google Maps right now mm. um, to see where the plane has gone down. Um, and like la la later laterally, I think laterally, it's pretty. It's actually above the city where I live in my province. It's further north. It's oh, really? actually pretty far north in British Columbia. Um, most oh. of most of BC's population is in the southern part of the province. The northern region is is very remote because it's <clears> cold. Because it's well, because there's so many mountains and so much wilderness, like it's virtually almost uninhabitable. So, um, Yeti. that's where they do all the clear cutting. Clear cutting? What's that? Trees, deforestation. Oh. oh. Yeti. Yeah. And the Yeti, yeah. Yeti. The poor Yetis don't have any trees anymore. <laughs> you took my tree. Huh. Uh, I like to think that they speak. And speaking, and they speak. I don't know why. Plainly, plainly, the Yetis. Yeah. Speak. <clears throat> yeah. They have language. They're they're intelligent. <laughs> Do you that's why Yeti? they're not. That's why they're staying away from us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're smart enough to know they got to stay yeah, away. Just, just sitting there, like laughing. Look at these stupid humans. <laughs> As their Idiots. trees fall. Yeah. But uh, anyway, see, I thought that was interesting. It was just a quick little Google search of like what happened on Valentine's Day that had to relate to nuclear stuff, and apparently there was. That's so really cool. Yeah, there you go. That was a cool segment. Mm -hmm. All right. So I don't have anything for a segue. Segue. But anyway, we're going to talk about what we've been playing in this week's gameplay segment of our gameplay. Vendor, why don't you start? Uh, I haven't really been playing anything apocalyptic related. Uh, mostly just Red Dead Redemption, which I could talk to you about until I'm blue in the space. But you have I been quite I'm obsessed over that game. I think I'm going to save that for Game Stack because I need to reflect on it. Dear Diary, <laughs> you know, um, and then come with some real stories. Okay. All right. Cool. So. Uh, Your diary. <laughs> yeah, I killed some people. Yeah, well, I don't he, know why. <laughs> Arthur yeah, Morgan know. has a diary, and I've that's literally what he people, writes. I don't know why. I don't know why. I just kill him. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. <laughs> All right. All right. It's probably the weaker part of his character, but. <laughs> so, there. I've been playing a new survival horror kind of scary game i guess it kind of qualifies for this it's not really post-apocalyptic there's really i don't even know if there's survival. backstory yeah i don't know if there's backstory behind it but it's called hunt showdown hunt colon showdown i should say ah, uh, um you know i was looking at this it looks really cool oh my gosh i so there's so much going on in this game it's very very unique and basically you it's a it's a pvp slash pve kind of quasi battle royale and the premise is there's a big baddie on the map that you have to find three clues in order to pinpoint the location of this big baddie once you find the clues you go to the big baddie you kill it and then it starts a banishing process which takes a while and then you banish its soul to hell after you banish its soul to hell you pick up some bounties and then you find it one of three exit points on the map Go to the exit point, wait for, I think, like 30 or 40 seconds, and then you exit the map and win the, and beat the match. The caveat to this is, is there's 12 people total on this map, all looking for the big baddie. There's also smaller zombie creatures on the map, and then there's, like, other kind of creatures, like worm creatures in the in the water sometimes. So when you, like, step in the water, there's these, like, worm things go, and, like, and, like come at you, like a tentacled creature. Mm. Um, there's also, like, this one baddie where the head is on the side, like this weird, like, a rib cage thing sticking out, and it charges you, and it shoots bees at you. And, um, Not the bees. Bees? 
I don't know what they are, but they Have fly. Have you guys and seen buzz. that rejected film where it's like, and now angry dick, angry ticks fire out of my nipples, and it's like bees come out, and what? it's like, mm. yeah. I'm gonna, I'll send it to you. It's funny. Oh, oh, are you talking to the mash Re- rejected film? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I am a banana. <laughs> um, and so there's like other creatures on there, and as you kill creatures, um, you you get money for that and experience, and but the big bad is the most. So there's a couple little caveats. When you are banishing the bounty, the main bounty, it shows up on the map. So everyone goes, there it is. Ah. And then they come and they like, wait. They wait for you. However, once you banish the thing and pick up the bounty, your dark sight, where typically your dark sight points you in the direction of the clues, your dark sight power turns into where you can see the other people through walls so while people are setting up ambushes you have x-ray vision so it's like they give you a big boost so like you're like all right there's five guys right there throw a grenade when we open the door do this and then you can kind of coordinate right um but the other thing is too when you pick up the bounty you you're always pinged on the map so people can follow you and chase you and and that kind of adds to the you know you're trying to run but then you're getting chased and attacked by other zombies at the same time as live people are trying to kill you right um, it's 54 dollars no well, actually that's the 40 american that's true well the legendary edition is the with the dlc is only 34 i like how the american. legendary the legend edition is it's um, cheaper <laughs> so anyway What's it called? Legends of the Bayou. Yes. So here's that looks cool. Here's the thing. It takes place in the 1890s in Louisiana's Bayou area. So the yeah. guns are period specific, like the Sharps rifles, um, and uh, the clothing is period specific. And cool. there's a couple other things too. You purchase, uh, like with in-game currency. You hire a bounty hunter. They're named, they're clothed. You don't change anything about their appearance. You don't name them. They're a person, and you hire them to be your bounty hunter. And then you play as that person in the game. Now, you can buy equipment and equip and spec them out with traits and stuff, um, and they level up. You level up as a person, but then, like, the actual bounty hunter can level up. But if you die, you lose that character and its equipment. So it's permadeath in that regard. Mm. but you still if you die in the game you get half your xp and i think half your money so you don't lose what you did but you do lose the character and the equipment and luckily the equipment isn't that expensive i have a lot of money in the game um from just not even doing the bounties because i can't as i play solo how long have you been playing this for like seven hours no 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 like a week total a week since when though last week like a year no last week like just started playing. I this. just started playing. Wow. Okay, I'm I'm watching the trailer as you're telling me about it's this. It's terrifying. And it looks awesome. It's it's it, it's also scary. It's it's like just shy of Resident Evil scary because especially when you're by yourself, when you're walking, if you're not looking at the ground and you step on glass, it's like Hush! and like things then notice you and then other people oh, hear you. No. Like, I was are playing there zombies. This... What? Like what kind of baddies are in the in the thing? They're like zombies that carry cleavers sometimes or torches, and one of them has like a head, like a metal cage on its head. Um, it's it's so it's it, like it's like apocalypse meets cowboy. Yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff going on here, and it's what do you what? My glass has bees on it. Oh, <laughs> oh my about bees. I was just showing the chat. <laughs> so I just um, realized. <laughs> I think we should play this. I, I think so this. too. I want to play this with you. There's only three people allowed on a team, so it's, like, made for us. Um, (laughs) Here's the other thing, too. I was playing quick play. There's, like, a nice little PvP-oriented quick play. I was sneaking uh, up on this area, and I hear these crows fly. And they flutter up, and I turn around, and I look, and I see them fly up from a field behind me. And I'm like, there's somebody. How do do the crows fly, Rick? I think, how? How was that? Can you just? We're waiting. So <clears throat> I'm I'm saying this because I turned around and knew that someone was in that direction because if you walk past birds like ducks and crows they fly away and call How? and then How's people that? will I'm going <laughs> to When someone hows you it's a cardinal rule that you have to repeat your <laughs> imitation call call <sighs> There we go <laughs> nicely done <laughs> Oh, that's good. So, 
Um, there, you know, if you're, it's it's so, it's so it's such a fascinating game. There's a lot of different elements going on here. There's like permadeath. There's survival things. There's PVE. There's PVP. The guns make the firefights intense because you fire and you're like, oh. And then you get like powder trying in your to load face one round. Like, Hold on, I just gotta get the. <laughs> Um, I gotta reload my gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. Never do you, that were again. Just, you were just Never doing do that. Never do that again. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, so I think the most important question we've all been waiting for, Shaleen can back me up on this, is what are the clothes like? They're pretty epic. Um, there's this one chick, uh, whenever her style comes up, I love it because she's wearing like this tucked in like long sleeve shirt and like bullet suspenders with like we're sold and her she has a really long thick braid that wraps around the front of her and i'm like yeah and uh it's some of the like there's a i think there's a legendary character that's a preacher that has like two upside down crosses on his forehead <laughs> it's just like oh man it's all about Jeez. so my wife when did was this game released though like like this Last past fall, august i believe august 2019 says this game has everything that is me in it. I I'm obsessed with the occult, especially centralizing around like like hell and demons like and heaven and, and sin. Yeah. And I love those themes and I love western, especially the, the late 1800s with like black powder rifles and early cartridge stuff. Um and my wife was like you need to play this game because they made it for you. You know, it's all about the occult and banishing yeah. and creatures. And, so when you played oh. it, she had she had already played it? No, she just heard about it from a Destiny she just podcast. Seen it. Oh. Yeah, and she just like Wait, was like, she oh, that sounds like a podcast other than ours. How dare her. I know, she's awful and uh we're separated. You can tell no, her that kidding. she's fired even though <laughs> we didn't hire her. So. Um, but yeah, yes, I mean, we've it's... never paid her for any of the amazing work she's done for these shows, <laughs> um, including this wonderful background that you guys see here. So, but yeah, it's it's a great it's a great great game, and it's it's scary to play by yourself. It as you play it more, it tends to get less scary because you you're like, oh, there's glass, you know, and I know what's coming, and I know this kind of creature, and I know you know. So, but so it's what kind still of, what kind of what kind of PVE elements then does it have? Well, the the zombies and stuff. So, like, while there's 12 other people on this map, there's still zombies and stuff around. So, if you're on the other end of the map and someone gets the bounty and then gets out of the map, you have five minutes to get to an exit point. And the exit points are random. So, you could be on the other side of the map and you've got five minutes to hoof it across this map, which is, like, Interesting. a bit smaller than the first map in PUBG. Yeah. And you got to do That's nothing pretty but... pretty sizable. Put, yeah, you've got to book it. And when you book it, you run into things you didn't expect. And so <clears throat> it becomes pretty hard sometimes to maneuver. Um, the other thing, too, I should mention there. Yeah, there is the permadeath. But if you're if if you you know, there's other mechanics I don't want to get into. But like if you're feeling like I need to get out of here, I can't win. Um, you know, I've been hurt a bunch of times. I've been res twice. I've got one health chunk left. I need to I need to get out. You can actually exit that match through an exit point early and collect the full amount of your bounty and XP while keeping your character alive. Yeah. So, um, it's it's a pretty cool. It's it's really cool. I want you two to get it because I want to play with somebody really bad. Well, I will put it on my wish list, and if it comes down in price, I will definitely play it. Okie doke. Anyway, that's my gameplay. Julian. Lovely. <laughs> um, <laughs> are we doing my gameplay, or we usually do um? Are we doing TFS nailed it during this segment? And that usually Oh yeah, you might as well do that now since oh, okay. I didn't have much to share. So this will be my this will be my life my play. gameplay. Your life play. Well, yeah, I suppose. That's a strange so, way to phrase uh, it. Let me just <laughs> let me just grab the, the cookbook here. So if you guys remember on our last episode of that Fallout show, we hosted the lovely author of the official Fallout cookbook, Victoria Rosenthal, uh, in which I shared my journey through the perfectly preserved pie and was tasked with making the mold pears. So as you can see in this picture, um, I was supposed to make the mold pears and we've had issues in the past with the pictures, me taking them on my phone. So this time I decided to opt uh, to using my good camera uh, and actually put in some work to taking some photos. Um, so uh, this was an easy recipe. Um, basically you just 
make um make your sort of mulled wine and, and bring it to a boil and then you add pears that are peeled um and simmer them for about 15 or 20 minutes uh and then you remove the pears place them on a heat uh on a plate and and serve the sort of syrup that you make which takes an entire bottle of red wine <laughs> that's wow sad. so having like one of these pears is literally like a glass of wine um, yeah but you could probably cook the alcohol out of it though uh a little bit yeah they were they were good i would say that they were pretty good um these would be really nice served with a little bit of ice cream. So what I did, um, so I, I, if I don't know if you want to throw the pictures. Up. Oh, you're throwing to the. Well, that is why we're talking. There we go. Um, so those are them in the pot, after I had simmered them. Um, so it's pretty pretty simple. You know, you just throw them in. I like that. And the shot. pears, the pears didn't really, they didn't take up the color as much. And I think again. Um, this is an issue with them being out of season. Mm -hmm. What do you mean didn't take? Um, they look red as anything to me. No, if you look at this, like look at the picture in the cookbook. Yeah. Uh, They're very red, right? So yeah. um, they they didn't really take to the color as much. I should have added like a little bit of beet or something to it. But anyways, the mm. next photo is, uh, that is like my fancy plate. <laughs> That's um, good plating. So I, yeah, I thought I would put it in a plate that had some edges so it would make it nice and crisp. It's edgy. Um, he always plates his things so beautifully. Uh, well, it's all about presentation. Don't judge my work. What? Get out of here. Scram. Um, <sighs> anyway, so those are the pears. They turned out quite nice. Um, I wish that they were a little bit red, more red. Um, I did save one good one that turned out really nice. I think it was a little bit more ripe, um, which is the next picture. Um, and I had some ice cream with it. Oh, delightful. And uh, it was very good. Yes, pistachio. Had some pistachio oh, ice cream. Oh, that sounds really oh, good. Lovely. I'm in the mood for ice cream. Didn't you Still? just eat a pint of Ben & Jerry's? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's the mulled pear. Um, they are delicious. Four Mile, I can share the recipe with you because it takes wine, so I know you're interested. Um <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time to pick another recipe, you guys. Are you excited? Are you I am excited? very excited. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is my favorite segment of the show. We are making Bobrov Brothers cabbage soup. Ew. This is this is uh, this is a, a, a definite change from the mold pears. Uh, it's bound cabbage. to happen, but we're going to make cabbage soup. The I vault is cabbage. filled with all your favorite prepackaged favorites. But if you have a hankering for some vegetables, for some reason, this nutritious cabbage soup is a great choice. For some reason. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, that is my new task. the uh, The recipe is listed as uh, medium difficulty. Should take about 45 minutes prep time, 45 minutes cook time, and uh, serves up to eight people. So wonderful. Got my homework. All Lovely. Right. Thank you, Bender. I enjoy that. That's my, it. Really, is my favorite segment of the show. I love it. Oh <laughs> uh, well, I played a bunch of Fallout 76 this week. Um, so I, I decided to go ahead and sit down and do the Grafton Pawn Shop. Quest. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that at all. It is a bit of a tease uh, for the Wastelanders DLC that's coming up. And doing this quest was actually, it kind of was the conspiracy that we wanted to happen with the petroglyphs thing. You know, it, it really, it Did it have to do with the petroglyphs? Way. It didn't. Well, it dumb. didn't. But it's it was very conspiracy-like. So, um, you go to this new building in Grafton that's that's it's a newly accessible building in Grafton and uh, and you go in it's a pawn shop and it is instanced so only one person is in there you know you have your own little pawn shop in Grafton oh that's cool yeah and uh, so I went in and and you find some notes leading you to some some different things I'm not going to spoil it uh, but upstairs, there is there's conspiracy boards happening, and there's clues, and it's actually really tricky to solve this. Like with the with the string and the pins and stuff. <laughs> there wasn't a string, a string and pins. Um, but um, 
it, there is some tricky tricks you have to do to to find the clues and it was really neat and I, I liked that they just gave you clues and not also map markers and that it's an unmarked quest I really liked that hmm. um I, I thought that was really cool and I eventually did find all of the clues I had to track down six different map pieces in different locations and they just gave you a very vague clue as to what the uh what the location is so several times i i made wrong assumptions and and i went to several different places before i found the right place and it was a bit of a scavenger hunt finding all these map pieces and you bring them back you have to bring them back to the grafton pawn shop and assemble them and there are a couple of other little steps that i won't spoil and eventually it leads you to a place uh, that you can visit on the map where you can find Vault 79. So um, this vault is apparently connected to the Wastelanders expansion somehow. Huh. Um, I, I don't know if this is where some of the some of the new dwellers are going to come from or what. Um, but it was a really cool quest and I, I highly encourage everybody to drop by the Grafton Pawn Shop and and do this quest because it was worth the time. It was it was a lovely way to spend an evening, and uh, and it is instanced. So I went ahead and did the whole thing by myself. Um, you could team up with someone and, and track down your pieces, but I believe they are at random locations. So um, it could be a little bit different for you than for other players. But it was a really neat quest. I liked that a lot. Um, I also spent some time hanging out with Archin. We did some, some random shenanigans. He upgraded my armor, um, which was funny. He had, he had visited Murmur -mur -mur uh, and I guess spent a bunch of scrip and, uh, Archin was like, Hey, do you want some new armor? I was like, sure. So what are you wearing? I'm like, I don't know. Whatever you gave me last time. Uh, <laughs> because I don't pay attention. I, I don't, I don't take the time. I can't be bothered to pay attention to my armor, but um, he looked at what I had and upgraded my armor and it's lovely. I have a lovely new set of armor. Nice. Um, I bought those heart balloons from the Atom shop. Right. And I put them everywhere and they're so obnoxious and I love <laughs> them. They're, they're <laughs> those metallic shiny balloons, uh -huh. uh, like the kind that, that kill wildlife. <laughs> yes, yeah. I put them everywhere. It's so great. And, so they, uh, do they come as like a set of three that you place? You can, there are two different, uh, there are some, uh, there's a set of four, I think. And then there's a set, uh, one that's just a single balloon. So cool. yeah, I, I have them all over my little, my little camp. My little camp is such a disaster. It's just, it's such a mess. Uh, I love it though. It's home sweet home. And I got the free pink suit out of the Adam shop. And of course, of course, I dressed Jim Justice in the pink suit. Of course yeah. I did. And he looks fantastic in this pink suit and the white wolf fedora. And he's so stylish. Just, it's, it's lovely. The suit goes with his pink hair. He now has a pink pit boy. It's, it's lovely. It's a joy. Um, and apparently you can no longer put Adam shop items in other people's camps. Um, you could oh. do that in the beginning. I, I know because uh, Jess and Archin put numerous things in my camp that I didn't have access to. Um, I learned this because I was trying to put the obnoxious balloons in Archin's camp and it wouldn't let me. So that was that was too sad. It was, huh. it was unfortunate. Uh, but we were doing an event and we were in the forest and we... Uh, Archon has been wearing the mobster outfit. It's it's like a pinstriped dark suit. He's been wearing that with his white wolf fedora. And we ran into this guy in the woods who was wearing a white suit and a white wolf fedora. So we stopped and took a photo together, which I thought was pretty fun. And somehow we had managed to line up like an order of size, which was also funny. Nice. So it was it was a cute picture. Um we found someone's camp who had posted their Twitter name. So I sent a photo of us at his camp to nice. that guy on Twitter. It was really funny. Uh, I love, I love that people do that, that it's, I feel like the community in this game is, is really something special. Uh, I, who, who was it that you found? 
I don't remember his name. I don't remember his oh. name, but I sent him a tweet. He had his his place set up like the Cabot House. So, yeah, it was it was cute. Hmm. I always love finding. I need to get. I never put my sign together because I could never afford the letters. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, the letters are costly. I think Archon had made me some letters. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, Archon made my my billboard. So it hasn't been that long since you were able to actually put things in other people's camps. I love how Archon is just carrying us through. <laughs> he is, yeah. It's like the... <laughs> he must look like Popeye at this point. <laughs> have, you yeah. seen, have you ever seen like the, the possum and it has the mother possum and it has all the baby possums <laughs> yeah. clinging to its back? That's pretty much Archon. <laughs> That's Archon carrying us through this game. Uh-huh. <laughs> But um, we were in the Enclave bunker. I had gone there um, because uh, Archon wanted me to buy some pockets for my new armor. Uh, because it was scout armor, which apparently you have to buy the pockets from the Enclave. You can't just build the pockets. And of course I need the pockets because I'm a hoarder. So we dropped by the Enclave bunker. And you know the Protectrons, are, are they're fancy. They're, they're so cute. You know, they have like the little suits and stuff. Little bow ties. Yep. Yes. Well, I was walking it, and, and they just started dropping dead for no apparent reason. Huh? I just kept coming across little Protectron corpses. But you never actually seen them die. No. They were just it was, dead. It was very mysterious, and I suspect foul play. <laughs> so that was, that was extremely mysterious. If anyone can explain the dead robots in the Enclave bunker, please let me know. So um, <laughs> last night, last night, we launched a nuke. Yeah, it was it was great. It's been a long time. Thank you. It's been a long time coming. Um, but Archon and I dropped a nuke. It was not Archon's first nuke, but it was my first nuke. And it was really fun. Um, I really enjoyed exploring the bunker. We went to Missile Silo Charlie. And um, oh, thank you, Archon. The champ was Chibi. The camp was Chibi Kinesis. Um, but we went to to Missile Silo Charlie. And uh, Archon's extremely patient. He's an extremely patient human being. And uh, I, I just, I explored this bunker the way that I, I would have if I was playing by myself. You know, yeah. I just, <laughs> I rolled through it slowly and just it absorbed the atmosphere and read every little bit of lore. And it was, it was really a neat experience. And this man, he has the patience of a saint. I, I'd be, I'd be hacking a terminal over there, and I would hear the, uh, the Colonel gutsy voice, and I'd hear the Assaultron voice, and, and the, uh, what is it, the Robo Brain? Just like, yeah. Uh, Don't let the alluring voice fool you. <laughs> I'm an eco killing machine. Yeah. And I would see Archon's health bar just drop to nothing, <laughs> while I'm hacking this turtle. Like Archon, you okay? And it'll start climbing back up his health bar. It's like, oh, I'm fine. Nothing to see here. Carry on. Carry on. I'll finish reading the terminal and I'll get off. And, and Archon's just standing there in front of this huge mountain of robot corpses. Just Jeez. <laughs> Meanwhile, I haven't taken any damage. I'm completely unharmed. He's, he's like the West Virginia Secret Service for Jim Justice, uh, governor of West Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> It was fantastic. It was really funny. Um, but as you progress through this bunker, you fight through waves of security robots who are trying to stop you from launching the nuke. And eventually, there are some friendly robots. And they are called crew chiefs, and they each have different jobs. One of them is uh, in charge of um, the launch, and one of them is in charge of, of something else. Uh, and you have these five little robots all doing their jobs, and they're adorable. And you have to protect them from the security robots. So you're defending yourself and these other little robots. And it was really neat. Um, what level is Jim Justice, Combobulator asks in chat. I believe he's 93 now. Um, but uh, gained a level or two last night, which was good. So yesterday I was in a, a, a lecture for um, school that uh, was about copyright mm -hmm. um, and legal rights and stuff for for like uh, like scientists um, and we got on the conversation of should show should robots have copyrights 
um, because there are now robots and and machine programs that are capable of writing an entire book um, right. without any human interference or intervention. Um, and I was like, well, robots should have rights. <laughs> <laughs> Because, you know, I am one. No, I yes. didn't say that. But, um, yeah. Or I am Vendertron. It was like my two, champion my, two worlds, uh, my two worlds crossed, and I didn't really know what to do. And, yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, but I, I was getting ready to launch the nuke. We were almost done. And then the uh, someone else launched a nuke right at that moment and launched it at the queen and i was so sad because i couldn't i couldn't launch my nuke at the queen it was already done i mean i guess i could have just doubled up but what's the fun in that so, so you i never nuked launched... the white spring i oh, nuked the white spring instead okay. and uh we went and we did the queen fight and then we went and just explored the irradiated white spring which was fun what is the qu what queen what the scorch beast queen oh yeah okay yeah yeah, 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 the Scorch Beast Queen is is like end level content. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. But it was it was a really great experience launching the nuke, and I really appreciated Archon being patient with me as I explored that area and uh, and being the secret service for Jim Justice, uh, keeping me safe. So that was fun. It was a really good experience, and uh, I feel really good about having launched a nuke uh, before yeah. Wastelanders comes out. I, uh, I think that Wastelanders is going to fundamentally change the world of Fallout 76. And I really want to, I want to experience everything the game has to offer at least once before that happens. So. Hmm. Yeah, that's hmm. good. You've been looking forward to launching a nuke for a very long time. Yeah, I, I do regret that you guys weren't there with me to launch the nuke. That was, that was a bummer, but... Um, we still have March. Indeed. Um, just... Yeah, that's exciting. I'm ex that's we fun. had a good time. Yeah. It was nice. Huh. Nice. So, all right. Well, um, hopefully we'll... I would like to try to launch Nuke in March, but uh, anyway. Thunder, yeah, what's up? I think that would be fun. Uh, well, you know how sometimes I like to shop while you guys are doing your gameplay? Um, I found this game on Steam. It's called Captain Bones. What? <laughs> yeah, the game's called Captain Bones. Anyways, I'm going to follow up with him later on Twitter. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So um, I'm a little confused as to what's going on with this next bit here in the uh, show notes. Now, uh, Are we some... not doing the challenge? Uh, I didn't think so. It knew. No. Okay. We're skipping the challenge for this week. But, uh, Vendor, do you have a little Valentine segment planned? Um, um, perhaps. You seem to allude to it before. Uh, uh perhaps? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, um, I think what, uh, we wanted to talk about was, um, Valentine's Day for Gamers. Um, and some things that uh, some games that you can play together as uh, couples or friends or um, you know even just one controller. <laughs> um, and we had started making a list, but I have a list here that I can share with you guys. Lovely. Which was already prepackaged for us by Janae Sitzes on uh, a GameSpot. So thank you for putting that together. Um, so this is what we got. So um, for the single ladies, you can play Dream Daddy, um, which is, as you guys know, is a dating sim where you play as a hot dad attempting to romance other hot dads. Oh, wait, maybe it's not appropriate for single lady. Well, it could be. It depends how which. Oh, we'll just leave it at that. You can interpret it the way you want to interpret it. <gasps> hey, I'm a single lady, and I'm cool with the story about a hot dad romancing other hot dads. It's, it's fine. <laughs> Does it work the same way? I don't know. Anyways, um, together uh, you design your own hot dad um, to decide which handsome bachelor to woo. You go on dates. You discover multiple endings based on different dialogue options uh, you can choose along the way. Um, and, you know, it's not all flirtation and dad puns but 
Dream Daddy has a very nice storyline as well about parenthood and memorable characters um, that will leave you uh, with some some nice memories. So you can play that. Um, you can also try out Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley is an awesome game that you can play uh, with friends and loved ones. Um, it's also really good as a single player game as well. So um, it's not just a farming sim. Um, it is, you know, there's, you build friendships, you do quests, you do all kinds of stuff. You can even get married to other characters including the friends that you play with in the game um, which is pretty cool so uh yeah and Shaleen, you and i played that it was a lot of fun uh-huh you can also play don't starve together this one's available on ps4 xbox one and pc don't starve um, is so good yeah i i haven't played it but it looks really good um and this might be a perfect game to buy for your significant other uh this valentine's day that you can play with them um, there's another one on the list they recommend called Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. Uh, it's a co-op adventure, uh, that you and your partner will explore the galaxy as lovers, uh, which stands for League of Very Empathetic Rescue Super Not or Space Knots. <laughs> nice. Um, I also like the Bare Naked Ladies reference. Uh, yes. Um, so you use teamwork to battle evil forces, uh, of anti-love and rescue adorable space bunnies. So what could go wrong? Um, so that one looks really fun. Um, if you don't like that game, you can sink your teeth into some Nintendo and play Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, this is hands down one of the best games that you can own on Nintendo Switch. Um, and uh, it has earned a, a lot of really great ratings. Have you played Super Mario Odyssey, Shaleen? Sure have. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's another good one that you can um, play with your significant other. Uh, it's also a very good gift if you need some distraction from your significant other. <laughs> um, so another um, oh. that's a good single ladies game as well. Um, Mario Odyssey, because, you know, these games are always about, uh, you know, rescuing Princess Peach as Mario. Yeah. And uh, in this game, Peach kind of takes back her freedom in this game. Like, I'm, I'm proud of her. She's yeah. a strong, independent princess who don't need no plumber. <laughs> um, Until the toilet also... breaks. Uh, you can also play on, uh, which is really good on Nintendo Switch. I can attest to this, and it may, may or may not, it, it it'll, it may make your relationship or it may break your relationship. Um, Overcooked, uh, and Overcooked Two. This is a fantastic game, um, and it it goes beyond just playing with your partner. You can play with friends, family. Um, it's a lot of fun, uh, but it really does test your relationship. Um, because you have to communicate in ways that you never really have communicated before um, uh, in most cases because it's it's very strategic and you have to work together. So uh, that's one that I recommend, definitely. Um, as well from, from Nintendo, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, always fun to play, um, especially on just like a date. If you want just an easy game to just play together, uh, that doesn't require any sort of thought. Very um, full of fun, but but simple as well. Uh, and then I also wanted to recommend um, some uh, tabletop, a tabletop game as well. Um, this game is called Fog of Love. Uh, and it's a two-player board game where you create a role play as two characters who meet, fall in love, and face challenges in their relationship. Um, so you have, you know memorable sweet moments difficult arguments and you have to decide how your character reacts and then you earn points and certain traits along the way just like you would in real life um and you can also have different goals and and by the end of the game uh your relationship either go, grows stronger or you grow apart so that maybe maybe not one that you want to play on valentine's day but uh it is a it, it is a game that um would be really interesting so that is my list of, of things for gamers to do on Valentine's Day. There's also a, um, I mean, if you guys want to add anything, you're more than welcome to, but yeah. No, I can't, I can't think of anything. <laughs> I got nothing. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, dear. I'm sorry, dear. If I knew anything about, uh, about this, I, I wouldn't be forever alone, so. 
Okay. Well. Yeah. Well, what a loving way to end this show of shows that we have here called That Fallout Show. But our streaming... uh, I've lost my train of thought. Um, Our streaming fun hasn't ended this weekend because on Sunday, and we're changing the time just for this Sunday, uh, at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Survival Horror Sunday with... Resident Evil Seven uh, will be partaking. Uh, how in so which impressive. How how is that? Resident Evil Seven. <sighs> and uh, so that'll be taking place on Sunday at two p.m. Uh, with Mua and Shaleen. and it'll be part three. We've already gone through this a little bit, and um, we've murdered the dad and now we're trying to escape the mother well i mean the dad i don't i don't trust that he's still murdered yeah i don't know his you legs want to go through the to-do list as a tease uh yeah let's our, talk about let's do resident that. evil to-do list let's um, do that real quick number one get the lamp from the spider lady <laughs> number two get arm for serum number three get snake key number four save mia question mark yes <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can find out if we do any of that this Sunday at 2 p.m. here on twitch.com, twitch.tv slash we just love games. You can also tweet at the show on Twitter at that Fallout Show. You can tweet at uh, our network at we just love games. You can tweet at me at Rick McVick, at Shaleen, at Shaleen L, and at vendor at Vendertron N. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash that Fallout Show. And also uh, slash groups slash that follow show. You can find our network as well, which hosts most of our game stack uh, information, which is facebook.com slash we just love games slash and also slash groups slash we just love games. You can email us at info at we just love games dot com. Like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash we just love games. And you can find our podcasts wherever podcasts are not sold, such as iTunes, Stitcher Radio, iHeartRadio, etc. cetera, et cetera. Leave us a review on iTunes with five stars and some text, and we will shout you out at the beginning of the show. It's been a lonely segment at the beginning of the show, so please leave us a review. We love them. It makes us feel warm and gooey inside, especially since it's Valentine's Day coming up. We would really appreciate some love. You can find us. I already did that bit. Uh, we can re- we record live every Friday. It's been a while since I've done an ending. Uh, you um, find us here Friday, 630 Mountain, 830 Eastern. Uh, at twitch.tv slash we just love games and thank you so much for listening and watching this evening Shaleen what is the last word now I am become death destroyer of worlds <laughs> <laughs>